Hi everybody, I'm Aritana Koli and this is part 9 of our UML tutorial series, Interactive Overview Diagram. So if you're ready, let's get started. Interactive Overview Diagram is so much similar to the Activity Diagram, but instead of each activity in an Activity Diagram, we draw interactions here. So, uh, alright? Instead of drawing activities or what we have called them in the activity diagram lesson, actions, anyway, instead of drawing actions, we will draw interactions here, all right? So, like activity diagram, interaction overview diagram is also drawn from a very high level. It is used to see the bigger picture of the project flow and shows how several interactions work together to implement the system concern. It uses different interaction diagrams like sequence communication timing and ties them together to make a single complete picture of the interactions that show a particular system functionality. So here is an example of an interaction overview diagram. As you can see, it is so much like the activity diagram that we have taken a look at in the previous lessons. And we can use these similar notations such as the initial state notation, decision merge, and the, the uh, final state notation. Uh, we use the uh, similar notations like we have used to use them in the activity diagram. But instead of actions, we have interactions here. As you can see and in each interaction we have one of the interaction uh, diagrams I mean sequence or communication or timing diagrams it is based on what is important for us to uh, show in that particular interaction right so let's first see for whom an interaction overview diagram is system designers and developers what is its purpose? Modeling business requirements and the project workflow by using interactions. Describe the parallel, branched, and concurrent flow of the system. Important elements, interaction, of course, which is a box that contains a part of sequence or communication or timing diagram that we've already drawn. So, points to consider. We should decide what kind of interaction diagram we should use for each individual interaction in the interaction overview diagram. According to what is important for us to show for that interaction. For example, when we wanna, uh, want to show an interaction, we should decide for that interaction message order is important or the timing constraint. And according to that, according to that, we finally decide which type of interaction diagram we should draw for it. All right. Now, what are the steps to draw the interaction overview diagram? We start drawing from the initial node, just like how we do it in the activity diagram. And uh, actually, uh, to drawing the interaction overview diagram, activity diagram can help us in finding out where to start and what interaction we should draw. Now, we draw all of the interactions and after that, all of the participants will be known too. Now that we know all of the participants, we write their names in the lifeline list in the interaction overviews title bar. And finally, we draw the actual flow of control between the interactions, just like how we draw the flow in the activity diagram. So, interaction overview diagram actually is so much similar to the activity diagram, but instead of actions, we use interactions in the diagram. And uh, when we use interactions, we will find out what participants are actually taking part in the uh, functionality that we are going to demonstrate for our diagram. And uh, we can actually write their names in the live, uh, as the lifelines of the interaction overview. As you can see, for example, uh, I have written uh, the participant 1, which its type is, for example, class, and participant 2, which its type is, for example, class. Uh, in our interaction overview, in our example interaction overview, uh, we have two participants mainly. 
and uh, these are the participants actually so because in this functionality that I'm going to uh, represent uh, we have actually two participants so I have listed these two participants here and that's it and uh, as we have also mentioned we will use sequence or communication or timing diagram for each individual interaction according to what is important for us to show for that particular interaction so in our example here because in this interaction uh, the sequence of messages was uh, so much important for me so I have shown this interaction with this sequence diagram here because the organization of the participants was so much important for me so I have shown it with the communication diagram and here because uh, I wanted to demonstrate the timing of uh, actions and different states so I have drawn it with the timing diagram and that's all there is to a timing uh, excuse me that's all there is to an interaction overview diagram I hope you enjoyed it so and um, please don't forget to subscribe to be notified of our upcoming tutorials so see you in the next part